Of course, as children grow older, the menu of parenting problems becomes more complex. How do you give your child a taste of independence without risking their safety? It's a balancing act Marilyn McLaughlin struggles with every day. No, your lung sounds pretty good. As a single working mom with two girls, 13-year-old Aaron and 11-year-old Melly. Here's what happens when Melly, her 11-year-old, asks to have 30 extra minutes after school to hang out with friends. I do not approve of you being out on the streets without adult supervision for that length of time by yourself. Mm -hmm. Melly, where do you hang out and talk to your friends? In school. In the school, No, you... Because a lot of the people play basketball and we sit around and talk. But there's no adult supervision over there. There's the guard. No. The guard is not looking out for you. He doesn't care what's yes, going he on. He stands by the gate until like six o'clock at night. The whole matter. And also, he's down in the office. Yeah. The whole matter of fact is this: that I I feel very uncomfortable. She's she's just in the schoolyard. How do I know she's just in the schoolyard? I'm supposed to trust you to yes. say you're just in the schoolyard. Yes. You are. Here we have the daughter who's telling her, you know, this is what I need. I need more independence. Right. I need more time. Maybe we the mother is saying, I don't want you to spend time on the street. They haven't met in the middle and say, I know you need more independence, more autonomy. Maybe we can find some place that isn't home, but where there is adult supervision. Maybe there's an after school program where I, as your mother, will feel more comfortable and you'll get to be with some of your friends and there are going to be adults around. It's natural for kids to keep pushing the boundaries, testing the limits of their freedom. For Bill and Ellen Owens and their 12-year-old son, Patrick, a rock concert has drawn the borderline between them. The argument moves to their living room, where both parents and child slip into their well-worn roles. When was the last rock concert you were at? 35 years ago. Exactly. But Patrick, they weren't in the papers 35 years ago saying that people were seriously hurt at concerts. The Primus concert was not in the newspaper. Yeah, but we're not going to know the next one that's going to blow up into a riot with the mosh pits. People are going to get hurt and killed and call the ambulances or somebody's going to bring them down. Yeah, we are scared. You're right. Damn right. This is a 12-year-old boy. Right. Is that too young to go to a concert? And there's no age cutoff either way. What's important is that if this is such a big deal for the child, how can the parents see that their main need, the child's safety, is addressed. That could be with a chaperone. If they're scared that he's going to get injured in moshing, how could he avoid it? If he finds himself surrounded by this, if people are grabbing at him, what does he do? If they decide not to let him go to this concert, sh should there be other options given at this point? Yes, they should let him do something different. Otherwise, he's going to keep on pushing the envelope, keep on pushing for more. As diaper changes and midnight feedings inevitably give way to first dates and late night parties, the best advice may be to remember that the ultimate goal is not about making carbon copies of ourselves, but a healthy, happy original. I'd like my kids, our kids, <laughs> to um, feel really good about themselves. And I think if they can feel that way, that they can accomplish whatever they want. I'd like my kids to grow up and move out. <laughs>